So this is the first video in the new series, Ray of Wisdom. This series is going to change into something different in the near future when I have more people I can record with. But for now, this is just going to be me spending some thoughts about different questions that I'll be dropping to you guys over social media. So because we just finished Black History Month, I decided why not start there? So. I dropped a few Black History Month questions on Instagram throughout the month just to get people's reaction. And these are the results that I got. So the first question I started with was, can we ever be post-racial? Um, that question was answered 70% no. The actual numbers were 32 no's, the 14 yeses. So people are not too hopeful about us moving past race in society. And the, the follow-up question showed the same sentiment. So the next question was, can we ever achieve racial equality? That was a three to one no answer, 42 to 14. And that just tells me that people think we're just kind of stuck where we are in terms of racism and race relations, which is kind of, discouraging in a way I mean not for my personal actions but for people to see that there's kind of no way past this I mean it really makes you wonder what actually then is people's approach to you know either racial reconciliation or just dealing with problems of discrimination in general and things along those lines the next question was about intercultural relationships so yes or no um, that was a 92 percent yes so uh, i guess a bit expected um 59 to 5 so people are definitely cool with intercultural relationships that question was relevant for me because i have seen like for black men or black people in general it's like you know we have to marry other black people keep the race going things like that um but the majority of people which i mean some black people along with other people answer these questions um but the majority said you know it's cool and i mean i'm in agreement with that i don't think that any single culture will die out due to intercultural mixing um i have heard from sociology people about um cultural dominance and suppression um that comes with intercultural marriages and usually one culture can take over particularly in the kids experience um but i don't believe there will be a loss of any culture because i believe there will always be people that will naturally just marry their same culture and not because of a apparent coercion or like a duty but just if you like someone from your culture you'll marry them um and because they're from your culture that definitely increases the likelihood of the similarities and stuff that you have so yeah that was the third question next question was is it okay to not like a people group this was only 75 percent to 25 percent in favor of no i say only well i consider it a little bit worrying um now one question uh, one reply that i did see was it depends on you know what a group stands for and things like that um, I can understand being in the opposition to an idea, um, and people, of course, hold those ideas. Um, however, I, I'm just very wary of discrediting a whole group of people, um, that are, I see as a whole group of individuals. Um, that's kind of a core perspective for me, um, regardless of what situation I'm in, I see groups as individuals. And the next question, is there a right and wrong time to protest? So this question was an 85-15 yes, um, 34 to six people. And I did a follow-up question to this where I said, you know, what is a right and wrong time? And I only got one answer, which was a pretty comical yet actually relevant answer. Um, a friend said a funeral I would not recommend. And yeah, a funeral would probably not be the right time to protest. So, I mean, given that there's a situation, the answer you can say is yes. Um, however, 
I am inherently wary of any people or any situations in which people do not offer an answer to a question um, that they support or offer an explanation. Because if it is that obvious and it is that easy, then it should take no more than five seconds of your time. Um, and in my mind, it's just a bit prideful and egotistic to be like, it's not even worth my explanation because it's like, okay, if it's not your explanation, then the other person's just not going to agree with you or go on your side because they'll never know what the reason is. For me, that question is rooted in, well, the Kaepernick situation. So people feel like sports are not a time to protest and work isn't a time to protest. And there's a video of a doctor that snatched the poster from these people that were blocking the street protesting. And you're saying, get out the way, people need to get to work. And being a doctor whose job is to save lives, I definitely understand the sentiment. Um, and going to work is probably a more serious situation. But a sports game, I mean, I don't see why not. Um, because it's a slippery slope, in my opinion, to be like, oh, you can't protest in a public space. Because it's like, okay, well, public's the only place you can really protest. You can't really do that privately. So if you start that, I don't know where you stop it. And so the next question was about slurs. So I put two different variants of a question. Can slurs change meaning with the user and can they change meaning across languages? So with the user, the answer was 79% yes. So 39 people said yes to nine people saying no. Uh, and with languages, it was actually 88% yes. So 37 people said yes to only five people say no. So slurs can change meaning with users and with languages. Um, so the first question comes up to me, obviously related to the N-word question, which I will discuss a little bit later. Um, across languages, though, um, one word that has come to my consciousness in the last maybe year or so is apparently gypsy um that in english has now been viewed as a negative word however being here in ukraine um hearing stories about gypsies having to run in with a group of them which was in my sofuska square video um people here they call them by that name and they do have stories to suggest what um that group as a whole has done um and I mean, frankly, it's just the name that they call them. It's not to be disrespectful to them. They would have the same things to say about them, I think, regardless of what they actually call them. Uh, they just don't like that that group is apparently so problematic. Um, and I mean, I haven't seen it for myself, but I mean, I've heard a number of stories. And I mean, I guess, you know, they did almost steal my football. So yeah, uh, with the user um that goes to the n-word so the n-word i put as a question but in this case i put black only or nobody as the options for answering um the black only answer got 79 percent of the votes so that's 45 people to 12 people saying nobody and it was i guess kind of a interesting question because i wasn't sure how the answer would go um, I guess this goes about in line with what I see on social media. I personally am not a fan of the N-word. Um, I've seen an article recently where one guy was like, if you knew what it meant to our ancestors, you wouldn't use it anyway. Um, which I I looked at a little bit of it. Um, my thing is like, th so there's layers to it. One thing is that, you know, the idea of reclamation. Um, my problem with the idea of reclamation is that reclamation suggests a restoration so reclamation means you know this word is ours and we're using it for empowerment and it's like i mean it's a term of endearment at most um but you're not going to see a black person on tv get up on stage and say shout out to my ends or uh, at a convocation or something at HBCU even, you're not gonna have the president gonna be like, 
y'all are a great group of ends or something like that for uh, what you achieve like it's still and on, on the internet like in terms of like the jokes and stuff that go on um being an n-word is still generally associated with ignorance of uh, misbehavior um just negativity in general um so this idea of reclamation i mean i guess it's nice in theory but in reality we haven't really changed i think the meaning of the word if anything we just said oh it's still a negative word but now we're the only ones that can say it um which i mean that's weird but okay um my other problem with it is this idea of you know linguistic ownership um and language is created to communicate and words are created to address specific things to communicate certain meanings and in using a word you are trying to communicate a certain idea um that that word is associated with so for the n-word if you are using it to refer to what the rest of the world or even someone else is referring to as the n-word linguistically it would make no sense that you would not be able to use that word because in not using that word, you therefore could not refer to exactly the same thing unless you're using a synonym. However, there is not really a synonym for the N word. You can say maybe Negro, um, but that still has a broader meaning that has a positive and a negative um at in terms of like historical you can talk about you know the negro struggle or negro spirituals or other things like that but the n-word that is a reference to specific ideas specific of well not events but specific ideas uh specific um just existence a specific concept um that does not that is not addressed by another word. So for me, and I'm not a linguist at all, but having had some experience with um, sociology and stuff and a little bit of linguistic um, exposure, it just doesn't make sense in my mind that other people would not be able to use a word that exists to be used because of said ownership. And then with the, and that's the negative meaning of it, the term of endearment, let's say, um, I still have not heard a valid pushback or argument for why a person, white person, they always say, who grew up in a black neighborhood couldn't say that word if they grew up in that situation. That was literally all they knew. Um, because if you grew up with it, you learned it in the context that the other users of it learned it, you used it in the same way they did because that's how language works when you learn it. Um, it wouldn't make sense to then be like, ah, oh, yeah, now that you're old enough for us to talk to you about it, um, your skin doesn't let you use that word. Um, that, that doesn't really make sense to me. Um, also, this idea of saying a word makes you racist, um, that I, I don't, that I don't get at all. Um, saying a word is an action. Um, actions can make you racist, I guess. Um, but saying a word, I, I don't understand how that makes a person racist. Um, that it just doesn't make sense to me. Like, they've never assaulted a black person. Um, they've never willingly contributed to the um, discrimination or to the plight of a black person or whatever you may want to say um but somehow a word that they said makes them racist um that just doesn't make sense and that's also a slippery slope of reasoning that can really be used to um that can be used to degrade pretty much any person um to say oh yeah you said that word so now you're this it's like oh really um so i mean in in the end, like with reasoning like that, we're all something we don't want to be because of a word that we've said. Um, so that idea, I don't understand either. So, I mean, it's just how I feel about it. So in terms of the N word question, 
I'm on the nobody side, I guess, because I just, I don't really see a need for it. It's not been truly reclaimed. It's still bl blocked on the radio and on TV. Um, I still have not heard it used in a positive way. So in my, I, in my opinion, this reclamation thing has not happened. When it does happen, maybe it can be restored into common usage. Um, but for me right now, it's just more talk. And I think black people wanting to get empowerment, which is nice, but empowerment through this kind of um, false idea of linguistic ownership is, I, I don't, I believe it's, we're much better than this. And the way how it has begun to be policed where people go through people's old tweets and old Facebook posts and stuff as soon as they become popular because they're like, oh, wait, he said that word. Now we can't support him. Really? Are you really being that hypocritical, that arbitrary, um, that, uh, that, that ridiculous? Like it's move on. We, we've all said something that we regret, something that we probably don't want the internet to find out about. Um, but because this person is able to be exposed, you go and attack them and make their life problematic. That's, there's so much more on this world that needs our energy and attention and things like that. So that's all I have to say on that. And I look forward to making a lot more of these videos. Um, I guess a Black History Month is probably a serious way to start this series. But um, in the future, I have plans to make this a pretty dope experience. So I um, hope you guys like it. Uh, hope you guys listen and thanks for all the love and support peace so i forgot a question in the filming of this video are racial differences overdone or overemphasized and i really believe that the answer to this question is encouraging and it's kind of in contrast to a couple of the other answers about if they think racial equality will ever happen but I guess this fits in with those answers to say that even though we may not ever reach these benchmarks, these standards of racial equality and being post-racial, we really do think these differences and stuff are overboard and that they probably aren't as big of a deal as we make them. So I'm not sure what that means, but... It's kind of nice to see, honestly. I used to wish I was Puerto Rican. Cause that type of black was different. They had curly hair and accents. And I would be called exotic.